All right, welcome back into Cherry Picking, everyone. Week 17 of the fantasy hockey season. Not really much of a week considering it is All-Star break coming up. We just have three games Monday, or sorry, three days of games Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. But we still have players to add this week looking after the All-Star break. Guys, that will be very valuable to your fantasy hockey team. So the first guy that we're going to be looking at is actually Jake Sanderson on the Ottawa Senators, uh, playing his first full season in the NHL this year with the Senators. At the beginning of the season, honestly, was someone I thought had a good chance to win the Calder. Unfortunately, his role just wasn't really uh, deep enough. It didn't get elevated enough early on in the season for him to kind of see that through. But it looks like the Sens playoff hopes are kind of uh, at a wit's end here, at, at, at a dead end here, just because uh, how tough this Eastern Conference has been recently. And uh, they're just too far behind these teams now to get enough wins to kind of make it into that wild card spot, who, which is a very tight race right now between Pittsburgh and Washington. But I think that's why Jake Sanderson is starting to get a longer leash. Uh, we're seeing here DJ Smith really starting to give this kid uh, a lot more playing time. Uh, for one, you look at his last six games, he's averaging almost 23 minutes per game on the ice, which is just a little bit less than Thomas Shabbat. So playing up to his caliber of ice times a lot because he's always been that workhorse for the Sens team. And even uh, when he's playing junior world, world juniors too, I remember he was playing an insane amount of ice time. So playing on the second power play right now, Jake Sanderson has been very effective recently on that second power play, kind of quarterbacking it. He has three points, three power play points his last three games, and then four points in all situations last three games his shot volumes also way up you look after over his last six games he's averaging three shots per game which is not something we've seen from him at any point in the season in a six game stretch so his offense is really starting to pick up some of the some of the the uh offensive skill that we saw when he was playing college hockey before too so for the rest of the season i think jake sanderson is definitely someone that'd be much more serviceable than what we thought at the beginning of the season because at the beginning of the season he was decently rostered so is somewhere where people were drafting at the end of their of their drafts at the beginning of the season and he didn't really pan out dropped a lot but now i think for the rest of the season he'll he will be someone if you're in a deeper league to pick up a defenseman all right so i talked about anthony duclair when the new year started kind of when i brought up the video of injury updates going on for the second half of the season and anthony duclair is taking a little bit longer than i originally expected to come back uh, doesn't look like he'll be back before the All-Star break, but he will be back afterwards. And I think he'll be even more healthy at that point, which is even better if you're looking to pick him up. You're talking about a guy last year in 74 games had 31 goals. Uh, he had 21 power play points too. So you're look, coming into a Florida Panthers team who's already been really good offensively pretty much throughout the entire season. They've been a, top, a team top five in expected goals for uh, for 60 this season. So really solid offensive team. You add Anthony Duclair back into the mix and I think he'll fit on that line with uh, Barkov and Sam Reinhart moving Lundell back down to the third line with maybe Listerinen and then perfect when Hornkovist comes back. I think we'll see that duo come together as that third line. And I think playing with Barkov will add a simplicity to Duclair's game. He's always been someone who doesn't need uh, the, the big X's and O's, which is kind of what Paul Maurice has been in the past, but I think playing with Barkov will just simplify his game a lot more. I think we could see his scoring ability really shoot up in the second half of the season along with this Panthers offense, considering they will be still vying for a playoff position and they are kind of reeling right now. So they'll need Anthony Duclair back more than ever. 18% rostered, you know, you're taking a small risk on a guy that who's, who's just coming back in the lineup, but a guy who we saw, like I mentioned, score 30 goals last year. So definitely someone you to keep your eye on and definitely someone you could pick up right now. All right, the next guy we're going to be picking up this week also a defenseman 10 percent rostered and that's sam gerard on the colorado avalanche i think he's, a, he's definitely a must add this week you're looking at a guy who's missed some time due to injury but i think it's evident that he's it was lingering a little bit and he's starting to finally get his feet back with under him he's having averaging about 22 minutes of ice time over his last four games where he also has four points so point per game over his last week which is solid playing on the second deep pair with eric johnson plays on the second power play and he's on the second penalty kill so on the ice for all situations um, a reason why we're seeing his minutes go up to 22 minutes back up again uh, he did have a game last week against anaheim too where he had seven shots on goal so i think we're really starting to see this colorado avalanche offense uh, start to come in of its own you know guys are coming back from injury this is finally a full lineup i think after this all-star break we'll definitely see a colorado avalanche offense similar to maybe what we saw last year in the stanley cup playoffs and and what really propelled them to winning a Stanley Cup. Um, I think Sam Girard could be a big part of that along with some of these offensive defensemen that they do have. Um, so I don't think this four game span is really a fluke for him either. We're seeing him have nine points in his 13 games since the new year started. So I really like how Sam Girard's been playing uh, since returning to this lineup. And if you're in bangers leagues as well and block shots are a category that count for you, he's second in block shots, shots amongst defensemen over the past week. So that's also some something that's pretty solid for him. There's just a lot to like about Sam Girard, especially this Colorado offense 
Avalanche offense and which direction it's going to be going after the All-Star break. All right, so the last guy we're picking up, tough for me to say to pick someone up on this offensive unit right now in the Islanders, but Kyle Palmieri, just too hard to ignore, especially considering he's coming back from injuries. Missed almost half the season because of an upper body injury, but he's returned. He's played in four games and he has five points already. Uh, no goals, but five assists, and we're seeing him average about three shots per game, so I think the goals will come. Um, with his production too, I don't think Lane Lambert has any choice but to continue to continue to play him at 19 minutes uh, per game, which is what we're seeing him play right now after the All-Star break. Last week in the NHL, Palmieri put up top 10 numbers. He was eighth in expected goals for uh, in the NHL amongst all players. Second most scoring chances too at 26, which is pretty solid for someone like Kyle Palmieri. And then he has second most shots on goal amongst his team and the second most uh, ice time amongst forwards too. He's already playing on the first line too with Brock. Nelson and Anders Lee, which is pretty much where all the offense has been coming at the beginning uh, throughout the season so far. They've definitely been the best offensive players on this team. Um, and, you know, not too many people, I think, are thinking about Kyle Palmieri's fantasy value, which is which is bad because at 6% roster, a guy who's averaging a point per game already coming back from injury, playing about 20 minutes per game, playing in all situations is his must add at this point. So if Kyle Palmieri is available on your waiver wires, definitely. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. Let me know what you think of the must adds this week. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Join the Discord where he's talking fantasy hockey talk in there, and I'll see you guys next time.